Today's video is sponsored by Paperlike. All of the information for getting your own Paperlike screen protector will be linked in the description. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I use my iPad as a computer science PhD student. I wanted to give a quick shout out to another PhD YouTuber called Kaylin from the Redhead Academic who recently made a video about how she takes notes on her iPad and I found that video really insightful but because my PhD is quite different um, I don't really tend to have the same type of notes because Kaylin's PhD is more humanities and mine is computer science but there are a number of different ways that I do use my iPad that I wanted to share with you and that I thought might be useful. If you have an iPad let me know down below how you use your iPad, what you use it for if you're doing a PhD and let's get into the video. So the iPad that I have is a 10.2 inch standard iPad, not a pro. And the reason I didn't get a pro was I didn't plan on doing any programming or really any heavy lifting in terms of usage of the iPad. So I essentially bought the iPad as a way to replace all of the paper in my life. So I didn't really feel like it was necessary to get a pro version. I have an OtterBox case and that's because I do drop my iPad pretty frequently, so it's important for drop protection. I know Case Defy is also a really good brand for that. And I didn't want ones that, I see a lot of people, you know, with the sort of flippy open screen, and I did want mine to be completely open. So that's why I went for one of those cases that just go around the edge. But for that, I also needed to have a pretty good screen protector to make sure that it being open didn't get any damage on it. And the one I have is a paper-like screen protector, which will absolutely make or break your iPad experience. I'll explain why. I also have an Apple Pencil for writing on the iPad and then also a paper-like pencil grip which really helps to just feel more comfortable as you're using the Apple Pencil. So first of all, the reason that I got the iPad and why Paperlike is so important for this journey. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I used to use paper methods of planning as well as note-taking for my PhD. I was using this sort of big A4 bullet journal as a research diary, as a way to track all of my sort of research progress. And I quickly found that in a PhD, you will accumulate a lot, a lot of paper. You'll do a lot of notes about a lot of different things. And it can be really difficult to organize all of those notes because you might have, let's say, really messy notes. So if you've taken messy notes afterwards, then it looks like crap. You might have notes that you ended up putting in the wrong place, which you're, you know, you don't want to like rip out a page and put it somewhere else. Or you might have the notes in a notebook which are then at home and you're in work and you need them which can be really annoying. So I found it wasn't super practical to travel around with all of this paper and I really just wanted to find a way to replace all of that. Initially I considered the iPad but I knew that from my previous experiences with the iPad the texture of the surface of the iPad is really smooth and when you write with the Apple Pencil it doesn't really feel right. It's quite slippery and it can be kind of difficult to really control where the pencil is going. So when you're writing, it can just sort of slide around. It's just not great for writing, I found before. So I was sort of thinking that wasn't the best option. And I'd seen the Remarkable, which it's more of a notebook type tablet, but those were actually kind of far behind on the market at the time. There was like a couple months wait and I didn't really want to wait. So I eventually came across the solution to all of my problems, which is the paper-like screen protector, which as the name suggests, it's a screen protector which helps the iPad basically feel like paper. If you can hear, this is the sort of sound, the texture of the paper like. It basically feels, I would say, sort of like a Kindle and it does sort of change the display a bit to be Kindle-like, which is actually quite helpful, I found, for if you are doing a lot of reading on the iPad. It just generally makes it less sort of harsh on your eyes, I found, visually. And in terms of writing, you can sort of hear like that sounds like I'm using a pencil on paper. I hope you can hear that. And I just find that it really, really does what it says. It's a screen protector, it feels like paper, and it really helps if you are gonna be writing on your iPad a lot. I'm very thankful to announce that Paperlike are the sponsor of today's video, and I will have all of their information in the description down below. First, I just wanted to go through how I apply a Paperlike screen protector. As you can see, I have my old screen protector on my iPad, and it is a little bit banged up. 
I've had it on there for 18 months and I do tend to leave my iPad loose in my bag with keys and all of that so I think it's not looking too bad all that considered but it is good to sort of switch it out every once in a while so I'm going to be applying a new screen protector. Paperlike have a great video of showing you how to apply a screen protector with Paperlike and I do recommend that you follow those steps because it's really important that you don't end up with any dust underneath the screen protector. So first thing I'm doing is applying the screen protector with some stickers to just place it in the right place before getting started and then what I'm doing is I'm cleaning off the surface of the iPad very very carefully and then I am applying the paper like so I am pushing out any of the air bubbles and you'll see that you do have some pretty big air bubbles initially so just use a card of some sort to smooth out any of those air bubbles and then basically you'll remove the top layer and get rid of any last air bubbles and that is it. You're left with your gorgeous new paper-like screen protector. I couldn't recommend them anymore, so I would definitely recommend if you have an iPad, definitely check out Paperlike. I'll have all of their information linked in the description below. So let's get into how I use my iPad. I mentioned that I wanted to replace all the paper in my life and that is literally all I use it for. I don't have any other apps other than Kindle and GoodNotes 5. I don't use it for programming and that's why I didn't want to get a pro. I basically try to avoid using any other apps on the iPad because I know they can be distracting and I feel like just having these two apps really helps me to focus when I'm using my iPad and it just means that when I use my iPad I know I'm going to be writing and I feel like that's sort of the mode that I get into once I start using the iPad, which I feel is really, really helpful. I do have an actual Kindle now, but I do have the Kindle app in case I am doing any Kindle reading on my iPad. But I also have an app called GoodNotes 5. I think it's about 10 euros to purchase this app, but it is very, very worthwhile. And this will be where I not only read all of my papers, but also do any note-taking, writing, anything like that will all happen in good notes. So the first thing that I use my iPad for is reading scientific papers or journal articles. And again, I do this in good notes. So I will take the PDF that I've usually saved to my Mandalay on my laptop. I will actually just share the PDF onto my iPad and I will open it in GoodNotes 5 and I will then use this to highlight anything that I feel is important, make some notes in the margins and once I have this annotated version of the PDF finished I will then put it back onto my computer and back up to Mendeley with all of my notes. I typically only do this for sort of bigger papers. If it's just the type of paper where I realistically only need to know the information from the abstract, I won't go into this much detail. I'll usually just go ahead and save the abstract and the link to the paper in my database. But for more sort of keystone papers that I'm going to be using and referencing a lot, I will go through them in detail and really go through all of the steps. So I do have a couple of videos about how I read papers specifically one on iPad and then one on my laptop, but I will have both of those linked down below. And then the other type of usage that I have for the iPad is writing. And there are a ton of different ways that I will use this iPad for writing. Because I don't do any classes myself, I don't really have notes from classes or anything like that. And because my PhD is in computer science, even when I am doing classes in computer science, there's really no notes. Um, it wouldn't really be sort of the way things work. You typically do things a lot more practically. I don't currently use these for notes. I do feel like this would have been really helpful for like my undergrad doing maths and stats notes, but I do use it for a bunch of different types of notes from a variety of situations. And what I really like about using GoodNotes 5 is it's first of all possible to organize your notes into different folders and into different notebooks. And it's really easy if you have, you know, sort of a just dump notebook, which I do, where it's just always open and I usually will end up just writing directly into that and then I will copy anything that needs to go into its relevant notebook. I will move it in afterwards. Another thing is that you can, in GoodNotes, you are able to search for different keywords. So if I have a particular type of note that I'm writing, for example, if I'm in a meeting and I'm doing meeting notes, I will actually just write a hashtag meeting at the top of the page and then I can go and search through all of my GoodNotes notebooks for meeting notes 
and it will return all of those notes. And then I will just do this with like a variety of different things. So I might hashtag it with a project name or something like that. I don't always do this, but if it's something I feel like I'm going to lose, if I've put it in the wrong place and I know I'm putting it in the wrong place, then I will definitely do something like that. So I do use this for meeting notes. So whenever I'm in a meeting with my supervisors or with somebody else that I'm working on a project with, I will use my iPad to take some quick notes during the meeting. And I am probably one of the messiest note takers. You, I'll look back at my notes and be like, what on earth is this? So this is why I really like using the iPad and GoodNotes 5 for this is because I can look at these notes and rewrite them in the same page and just reformat them so that they make a lot more sense and so that they look a lot nicer. And I really feel that helps a lot with being able to actually use these notes again in the future. It's also possible to take any notes that you've written and turn them directly into text. So I will often afterwards upload any notes into my Notion. And so I will use that sort of text feature by turning them into text and then put them into my Notion, which I find again, really helpful for just keeping them in the same place. As I said, my notes are typically very messy. So I am trying to figure out a few ways to make my notes look a little bit nicer. So I've been trying out Paper Likes brush sets, which basically teach you how to make sort of nice calligraphy type lettering. So if creative bullet journaling or creative note taking is something that you're interested in, I definitely recommend checking out those because they're really fun and they're totally free. So I'll have those linked down below as well. Another way that I use my iPad in terms of writing is for journaling and reflection. So this is something that I've really just started in the last year is to do some sort of daily reflection. And this can be either personal or work related. And I do find that it's important when you're doing a PhD to be reflecting on your work practices and reflecting on the day in terms of how you've worked. Keeping a sort of research diary is really, really good for being able to look back at your progress and as well sort of see how your thoughts are changing as you are going through the PhD. And what I like about using the paper like screen protector and using good notes is that when I do this sort of reflection, it really does feel like I'm writing in a diary. It doesn't feel like I'm writing on an iPad and I can just write and it'll just feel really like the authentic sort of journaling method. But I find when I try to do it on a laptop, like if I'm typing, which I have tried to do before, I just find it's not really, it doesn't really flow as well. The next way that I use my iPad is for brainstorming. And again, this is something that I feel is very underrated when it comes to things that you should be doing regularly as part of your PhD. Brainstorming is really a way for us to use our brain creatively and to come up with creative ideas for different things. I think a lot of people don't really realize that doing a PhD is a form of creative problem solving and brainstorming is one of the ways that we can actually get to really creative places without really realizing. One of the tests for creativity is to basically just give yourself a time and basically force yourself to brainstorm for the entirety of that time. So it could be like 10 minutes about a certain project that you're working on and really force yourself to use that full 10 minutes. And you'll end up like writing down some really good ideas in the beginning and then starting to write down some probably not so good ideas. And then by the end, because your brain has been forced to do this, it will start to pick up some pretty good ideas again at the end. And this is one of the things that is sort of used as a test for creativity and also as a way to develop creativity. And it is something that as researchers is super, super important because if you don't have the ability to do creative problem solving, it is gonna really dampen your ability to have those creative breakthroughs, which you really need to be able to do a PhD and to do research. So when I'm trying to boost creativity, I will typically just force myself to do a 10 minute brainstorm about anything. It could be work related, it might be home related, it could be related to my business or my brand, but I'll basically just put a list on the top of it or sometimes I'll do one of those sort of mind map ones and put the topic in there and set a timer and just force myself to do it for 10 minutes. And I find that by the end of it, I definitely do feel like I'm in a lot more of a creative mode. So I definitely recommend trying that out. Another thing that I will use it for, which is sort of similar, is for actually making drafts of things that I'm working on. So it could be for a project. So making a draft of a paper that I'm going to write with the sort of bullet points of what might come in each step. Sometimes I feel like when you're writing a paper and you see a blank page in front of you, it can be very overwhelming when you're doing it on a laptop like typing but I find that when I'm working on the iPad I'm working 
in a notebook on the iPad, it just feels not as daunting. And I feel like I can just more easily sketch out the ideas about what I would like to put into the sort of general outline of the paper. So what I want to fall into the introduction, the methods, results, and even I'll use this for like drafting out some plots. So if I have results and I'm trying to figure out how can I sort of represent these graphically, it means I can just sort of sketch out what the graphs should look like. And I feel like that really helps me to get a sense of what I need to do for the paper. And I'll do the same thing when I'm planning out YouTube videos. So for example, when I was planning this video, I did the same thing and I just feel like it really, really helps. The other thing that I use it for is pseudocode. So if you're not a programmer, you might not be familiar with this term, but essentially this is what we computer programmers will use to sort of sketch out the design for a program before getting into the writing of it. And essentially I will plan out what a algorithm or how I'd like the data to be structured. And I find it can just really help for when you are getting started. And it's pretty simple. You basically just write in pure English what you would like the sort of structure to look like. And obviously with that, when you're programming, it is quite different, but it gives you a good sense of how you want to structure things. So if you are familiar with programming, it's things like understanding what should be in certain loops or if something should be outside of loops, um, what steps need to take place within those. And I do find this is one of the most helpful ways that I can do this. And it means as well, when I'm looking back for the time, when it's time to write up my paper, we'll usually include some sort of pseudocode algorithm in the paper. And using the version that I've written in my good notes can be just a way to do that a lot more quickly. And of course, the last way that I use my iPad is for planning. I do typically do a lot of my planning in Notion, as you well know. I'll typically put my plans into Notion, but sometimes I'll do a bit of pre-planning on my iPad before getting started. So that could be even just creating some lists or just sort of planning out what I want each week to look like before putting it into my Notion. I definitely feel like this can really help. Paperlike have a really good free digital ebook that you can use, which has all these planner templates for each month and each week of the year, like the entire year. And I feel like if you don't want to make your own templates, it, it's just a really handy thing to use. So again, I'll have those linked down below, but I'll definitely find these really helpful for if I'm planning out content, for example, I don't want to necessarily put them directly into my Notion calendar. Sometimes it can be really helpful to just see the calendar on the page and sort of be sketching in when I think it might be good to do certain videos. So planning will sort of be the last way that I really use my iPad in terms of writing, but it is literally Literally endless. I do feel like since using it, my notes have gotten a lot better because I can come back and really look at them and reorganize them. So I'll oftentimes be going back through my notes and finding, especially I think for things like the brainstorming where I'll go back to it at some point and be like, oh, there's actually a really great idea here that I can work on when it comes to business or branding or even PhD related. It's so much easier on the iPad to just keep track of all of this without necessarily losing any of it. So that is it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And thank you again so much to Paperlike for sponsoring today's video and creating products that really make writing on an iPad so much easier and just generally more pleasant experience. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you have an iPad, how you use it, and if there's anything you think I'm not doing on my iPad that I really should be. Thanks so much for watching this video. Thanks to all of my wonderful members as always, and I will see you all in the next video.